Hello lovely people, this time I am sort of responding to a previous video of mine. Sophie Vlogs! A little while ago now, I posted a video that was the 10 lowest rated books on my TBR. Um, I have since then slowly been going through and reading them. I have one book left to read as of recording, so I'm going to be posting a wrap-up of that soon. But I thought it might be interesting and a nice treat to myself to do the opposite and do the 10 highest rated books on my TBR. Um, as, as I did last time, I've limited this just to the physical books that I own, because if we were to go through my Goodreads TBR, I don't own all those books, and there are quite a lot of books on it, because I use it for filing away future read ideas. I have looked at all the books that I own that I haven't read yet, I have looked at all their ratings on Goodreads, and I have compiled my list of my top 10 highest rating books. So, both of these books have a 4.33 rating on Goodreads, I'm going to talk about them one by one. So I'm going to start with... Son of the Shadows by Juliette Marillier. This is the second book in the Seven Waters series. I've got to call it a trilogy. I'm pretty sure there are more books than just three in this series. Um, the first book, Daughter of the Forest, I read as part of um, Mistake, um, Mistake Reads. It was the book of the month, the first one that they chose. Um, this is essentially a series that is rooted in Irish folklore and mythology, and um, the first book followed one character, I believe that this book is following a descendant of that character, so we're still set, set within the same family, but time has passed. Um, I don't know a lot about this because I've been deliberately not reading the blurb very much because I didn't want to have any spoilers, but I'm excited to see how this series continues. So this is just essentially a fantasy that I'm excited to read soon, and we're going to leave it there. The um, number nine book is Lyra Celtica, an anthology of representative Celtic poetry, edited by Elizabeth A. Sharp. This book is bought, was bought for me because I love Celtic writing. From what I know, this is essentially just a collection of Celtic writings through time. From looking at the contents, I can see that we've got ancient Irish and Scottish writings, ancient Cornish, um, and then we get into like early Cymric and medieval Welsh, and then Irish modern and contemporary. So um, as far as I can tell, this is really taking us from the ancient to um, some more modern writings. This is going to be one that is definitely going to take me a while to read because I'm going to dip in and out of it. Um, but the fact that it's got such a high rating, I imagine that this is quite a niche read, which might be one of the reasons why it has a higher rating. But also, I am just excited to experience such a broad time scope of Celtic writings and sort of see, are there any things that link these writings? Are they just completely separate? It's going to be an interesting journey. Coming in at number eight with a 4.34 rating, we've got Life and Death in Shanghai by Niang Cheng. This is a non-fiction book that's all about Niang Cheng, who was accused of being a spy in Shanghai. She was locked in solitary confinement for six and a half years. Upon coming out, she found out that um, family members had been um, killed in her time in prison, um, all of the changes that had happened, and it's essentially looking at that period of history. I do not know a lot about Chinese history or the Cultural Revolution, so this is one that I bought specifically because I just thought this could be a really great way to learn some stuff. I think this is going to be a really hard read. The fact that it's got such a high rating, um, I think, makes me feel more confident about going into it. I think I've been putting it off for a bit because I'm a little bit intimidated by it because I don't know anything really of the context. Um, but yeah, I'm actually quite looking forward to diving into this one and just learning about something which a time period that I have absolutely no knowledge on. Coming in at number seven is uh, the first book of this that I've actually already started reading, but I thought I would include it anyway. That is We Were Always Here, a queer words anthology edited by Ryan Vance and Michael Lee Richardson. This is an anthology of Scottish LGBTI plus writings. Um, I have, as you can see, started dipping into it. Um, so far, it's a mix of um, fiction short stories and some poems, stuff like that. This is one that I'm really excited for. Um, already my reading experience is reflecting the high rating because I'm currently really enjoying this. Um, I think the quality of stuff in it is really, really great. And essentially, I'm excited to finish this soon and to get like some new, um, some new writers that I can explore further. So this is one very excited to be doing. Coming in at number six is a booktube favourite with a 4.46 rating. It is Six of Crows by Leo Bardugo. I'm hyped for this one. I don't know if my book chat has gone live yet where I talk about Shadow and Bone. Um, suffice to say, perfectly enjoyed it. Didn't really blow my socks off. I think I had too high expectations based on the buzz. Don't know if I'm going to continue with the series. But I have heard so many good things about this one that I am really excited to dive into Six of Crows. 
and I'm not surprised that it's on this list based on just like the reputation that it has on booktube so this is one um if you don't know this is well, I was gonna be like give, I was gonna give you a plot summary if you don't know but also like I don't really know what this is about because I've been avoiding spoilers um it's set in the Grishaverse which I, is like fantasy that's inspired by like Russian history in some ways I think that this has a heist narrative in it from what I've heard that is literally everything I know about it. Is there a character called Kaz in this? I think there is. Again, I've been keeping my spoilers low. But suffice to say, hyped. Very hyped. And then our midway point at number five with a 4.49 rating is The Fourth Dimension by Yanis Ritzos. Um, this book I picked, I technically have read part of this before, I've just not read it the whole way through. Um, when I was at university I did a, um, because I did English and classical studies, my classical studies side I did a module that was on modern Greek literature. There were literally three of us in the class, it was the best time, it was great. Um, and Yanis Ritsos is one of the authors that we looked at to get a better understanding of like contemporary Greek writing. So he's quite a big name in the Greek literature field. From what I can remember of this, it's like dramatic monologues. Um, I don't really remember anything about it, despite the fact that I'm pretty sure I might have written an essay on it. I don't really remember. <laughs> Time passes. Brains get lost. Um, but suffice to say, again, this is one that I think is maybe higher rated because less people have read this one. If I remember rightly, it didn't have as many ratings on Goodreads. However, I'm still very excited to read it and actually remind myself of what it's about because I have entirely forgotten. The next book continues that thread slightly with a 4.5 rating. This is The Mind and Art of C.P. Cavafy, Essie's Essays on His Life and Work, and then it's got a bunch of different contributors. Um, C.P. Cavafy is another one of the people who I learnt about during my Modern Greek Literature module. He is by far my favourite. Cavafy is one of my favourite poems. Poems? Poets. <laughs> I specifically really love his historical poems. He also does um, other types, like genres and stuff, but like his historical ones are where like, my soul goes, oh yes, 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 yes. Um, and this is a collection of essays <laughs> on his life and work. I just thought if I love this, po this poet so much, why don't I get a better understanding of who he is? And this seemed like a really fun way to do that. Again, this is another one that didn't have a lot of ratings on Goodreads, so um, I guess that you only really read these things if you're like actually really actively interested in this poet. So, <laughs> But from like the high ratings, it means that people who are interested in this poet did really enjoy this book, so it bodes well. Right, we've got our final three countdown. On, in third place, with a 4.51 rating, this feels a bit cheeky to count it as one book, but we are. It's The Complete Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So, like, it's the rating for all of the books as a whole, which is why I didn't know if I should include it, but then I did think, hey, it is actually a physical book that I own, so I'll go for it. Obviously, this has four novels and 56 short stories in it gonna take me a while, not gonna rush it, maybe I'll just dip into some, and then when I do my wrap up later of all of these I'll give you like my overarching thoughts on Sherlock Holmes maybe, I don't know, it just seems a bit ambitious to be like I'm gonna read all of this before I film the next video, but you know, I don't know if I need to explain Sherlock Holmes, I think we all kind of know, I have read some Sherlock Holmes before but I've n not done it recently so I thought this could be an opportunity to dump back in. Okay, we are in it. The final two. The second most highest rated book on my physical TBR is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Ro Patrick Rothfuss. Um, this has a 4.54 rating on Goodreads. Um, I have heard so many good things about The Name of the Wind. I all, all I do know is that it is fantasy, um, and there's like the, I know that there's a the main character is a guy who narrates it. There might be a loot involved somehow. <laughs> I don't know. I've desperately been avoiding spoilers because I really want to read this. This is one of my um, books that I've set myself to read this year, specifically been saving for autumn because I feel, I, I've been told it takes place in autumn, so I thought it would be a really nice like autumnal read to tie in with the season coming in. So I am going to be reading this one very soon once I've just finished what I'm actually currently reading. Um, so yes, very hyped for this one. And then the final top spot with 4.58 is The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss, which is the sequel to 
this one. Which is interesting. I feel like sometimes sequels are higher rated on Goodreads because if you don't like the first book, you're not going to continue with the series. So everyone who likes the first book continues with the series and usually, unless something goes terribly wrong, kind of likes the second book so it gets like a good rating. Um, but I am hyped that the series seems to continue to be so highly rated. It's not just like a one book wonder. I know that the third book is coming out at some point. I don't know when. So again, gonna read that one, then gonna read this one. We're really, really hyped. Haven't been reading the back because I don't want any spoilers because I still don't know what the first book is about. So yes, those are the 10 highest rated books on my physical TBR. I find these types of videos interesting because when I did my lowest rated books, it was interesting to think about why they were lower rated. For example, there are a lot of like short story collections and I know that like short story collections can be a bit hit and miss. Personally, I find them sometimes quite hard to rate because you like some of them, but you don't like all of them. So it tends to get a lower, like a more average low rating because you average it out. Whereas obviously this, there are a lot of books which A, I've either heard really good things about, so I'm not surprised that they're on here, or B, have a more, con a more like concentrated reading audience. So the likelihood of the people liking it is higher because it's a little bit more niche so like you're only reading it if you're already interested in that subject but at the same time i feel like there's a nice mix of those two sorts of things in this list so hopefully as i go through and pepper these through my reading it's going to be a really fun enjoyable time because i have had some mixed feelings on my lowest rated books as i was expecting so it's it's going to be fun to do this but have them all hopefully be like super great so yeah that's it from me this week. I would love to hear if you have read any of these, if you have thoughts on any of these, what are the highest rated books on your TBRs? Do let me know all of this and more in the comments down below. Otherwise, I hope you're having a lovely week and I will see you next time for something different.